again. If only that were the end of the story. I don't think he would be in the same view. No, he said he wouldn't. Yeah, we could have done the thing where you're just like, oh, the narrative power of objects, meta, blah, blah. No, we were like, is the damn thing there? Or did someone take it? We got so curious about this that we convinced uh, Craig, Reagan, and Dirk to go back. Now they're here. And check. And we sent our producer, Molly Webster, along for the ride. This house at camp has just arrived. <laughs> I didn't realize when they were, like, giving each other a hug the first night at camp and I was there with my recorder shoved in their faces that, like... It was. It was actually, like, a big moment. I guess this is a reunion trip. We haven't seen Dirk in ages. Reagan had said that one of the last times, now that people have kids and families, one of the last times they were together was this sea chart. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yay, we're so happy to be here. And so they were really, really, really excited to like be together. Wait, how long ago was this when they found the thing? It was 11 years ago. This was 11 years ago? Yeah, so the kids were, Reagan was five months pregnant, and the kid she was pregnant with is Jasper. Well, turn off the light and come on out. Come say hi. He's now, he just had his 11th birthday. Can I bring my backpack out? Wow. Close the door and come say hi. Hi. Hey, man, I'm Molly. We were I'm Dirk. <laughs> Dirk had never met their kids. Well, he had, but, they, but the last time he saw Jasper, Jasper was a baby. Uh, and the other thing is, oh, I'm just going to say, Craig and Dirk are like <laughs> brothers from another mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they are like the bestest bromance I have ever seen. <laughs> they love each other so much. So anyway, so we, so we get there and we like drop our bags, we go to sleep. And uh, get another sleeping bag. Woke up, four wheel drove or drive. I don't actually know how that goes. Out into the mesas, parked the cars, and then we hiked a mile and a half to the edge of the mesa. Wow. Basically, the entire landscape felt like they had just put me on a bonanza set. <laughs> it was like gnarled, warpy trees, red, red, sandy sandstone. There, you're on this mesa, and then it falls off into this canyon, and then there's, like, another mesa. And then that falls off into a canyon, and there's another mesa, and then that. And it's just this, like, unending landscape. But look, we're floating up here now. Yeah. And there's just, is it just, like... There's no sound. There's no cars in like, distance? No sounds, no nothing. <laughs> it's infinite. I know we came out the top and across when we went back to get rigged. And basically our objective was to go somewhere into this like canyon land. Drop down to where Reagan was camping yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, and come along there. And somehow find like a tiny little seed jar. It's weird to go back because I like to think of it. Look, this is going to change things. If it's, if it's not there. If we do not find the seed jar, I'm going to be right so mad. I like to be out in the world and just think about it. Just go, okay, there's there's a, a seed jar sitting there under a boulder right now, and it will be there for the longest time, and, and it's just quiet. Then I can imagine the, the wind going around it and, and some more sand building up, and, and it's just this really nice thought of isolation and perpetuity. I kind of want to hear it echo. So we set up camp on the edge of a mesa, and then we all went to sleep. What's the flute sound? <laughs> the flute, that's, I don't know, Craig apparently has a flute in his bag. <laughs> Dirk calls him flute boy. <laughs> it was weirdly appropriate. So anyway, so we, so we, we wake up like first light. Is today the day, guys? Today's the day we go find out if uh, if the egg is still there in the nest. Today's the day! We start hiking, we go down this 800-foot descent. Look out for those rocks. No femurs are broken. We strap this down. The Anasazi were some tough people. We wind around this canyon. Swimming on these cliff sides. Through a saddle, around the back of another canyon. How long did this hike take? To get out there, it probably took six, maybe seven hours. Wow. We're going pretty slow. The kids were amazing, um, but also slow. God damn it. It was starting to, like, 
It's starting to bug Dirk, I think, is the way to say it. Oh, it's really hot. The sun's straight overhead. I think they'll end up having to park the kids somewhere. Sure enough, at the end of the six-hour hike... If you could leave your pack so that they've got extra water and snacks... Uh, the kids need a break, and so we sort of leave them in an alcove on the side of the canyon. <laughs> I want to come. Well, well, we'll, we'll figure out where it is, and then we'll get you so you guys don't Hopefully leave. I brought my book. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. And Reagan's like, all right, boys, you have your emergency whistles. Remember, three times, but no joking. Okay. Final ascent. You know, oh. we went up that angle. Yeah, we went up that diagonal there. I remember it really, okay. really clearly. I'm all behind you. So there's this, we were slammed up against this canyon wall. We needed to get over it. Just to get up. And the only way to do that was that there was a boulder sort of out in front of the canyon wall, and it created this skinny little chute. And we had to wedge ourselves into the chute and, like, go up it. No, I think getting up on it is 60 feet. Right. So take a breath there, Molly. Hold on. Take a breath. <sighs> I'd like to get off this plant. <laughs> I had to, okay. Okay. like, put my back against one wall and there you go. my feet against the other. Push between the two walls. And I had this moment where before I left, Dylan told me not to die for Radio Lab. So I paused, and I was like, okay, don't do this for Radio Lab. <laughs> do it for yourself. <laughs> There. 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 Okay. Is so doing that again? By the time we get done with the gnarly ascent, everyone's like, this sea jar is going to be there because no one else would do this. <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> you got the spot, babe. Just, just, head, just head down that thing. So... Dirk and Craig are like, okay. This is it. We did that route. I'm absolutely sure we did that route. The sea jar should be around here somewhere. We're like walking around giant tumbled boulders looking under. We've got like a quarter of a mile of canyon face to figure it out. Just giant tumbled boulders. Craig thinks it's to the left. Dirk thinks it's to the right. Anything, Dirk? No. It's so weird because. Does it look familiar? Uh, this, I, this is, this is it. This is the spot. It's been 11 years. Yeah, but I just, I know this is the spot. I know it. Well, we don't see the spot. It's just getting trickier and trickier. They're like just going like really confused. We're that far down. We've been looking. I don't know, for an hour? And it all, like, looks the same. Like, just everything looks the same to an untrained yeah. eye, right? It's like, where's Waldo land? <laughs> and we're trying to find Waldo. <laughs> Go over, find Craig. Get his thoughts. I finally see Craig kind of far off down the canyon, standing by himself, just staring at the ground. And I was like, hey, like, okay, any luck? I went down it looked at what would be, have been our likely route up. Yeah. Which is right up through here. Yeah. And he points to the ground, like, right where we're standing, and he says, I think it's, like, right here. I think, like, this was the place. And I don't want to think about this particular possibility. See all that stuff I just walked across? That went... Yeah. That's all fresh. Oh, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean, fresh? Well, we were standing on this pile of really sharp rock. It was just all of these sharp little jaggedy knives. I mean, it sort of didn't look like any of the other areas we had been in. <laughs> it, it's possible that the cliff has fallen here and covered everything. The top of that cliff. If you looked above us to the top of the cliff, it was like someone had just taken a meat cleaver to it. It was just like sliced off. This whole thing broke off. The entire cliff face had fallen off and annihilated everything hundreds of feet in either direction. It's been totally destroyed. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have survived. 
even the giant boulder protecting it. Like it's just, it's been wiped clean. It reminded me of like an iceberg um, calving. You see all those videos of like the front of the iceberg just all of a sudden cleaves yeah. off. That's exactly what happened on this cliff. So you're talking like, like a 10,000 tons of rock falling here. Just. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, 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 that's not what I was thinking was a possibility. And I'm not swallowing it just yet. So he calls in Reagan. Reagan, come toward us. And then Dirk comes wandering over. It's, it does kind of make sense, I guess. No. <laughs> If the pot's been here for 700 years, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all that it would happen in the last oh, no, 11 no, years. No, I mean, Why? It's not looking right. I, it was here. It was right in here. I know it was here. No. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Craig's, like, leaning against the wall. Dirk was like, wow, man, I guess, I guess this must be it. And it was this real, like, they were grappling with something, and I was, like, trying to figure out, like, what they were grappling with. And Craig just kept talking to me, like, not actually about the seed jar, but about the place. This is where I remember Reagan hoisting up her pants, pregnant, squatting, and Dirk and me on our knees, looking in on this thing for the longest time. You know, it was very clear in my mind to have the place itself gone. It's, I'm fine, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but, so but Jesus, this is, this is a different kind of sadness that I wasn't quite, uh... Are you sad? Yeah. Yeah, this kind of sucks. If it was missing, if somebody had taken it, that would be a sad of like, oh, screw you people. Why do you do this? This is... <laughs> this is gravity. Dirk's gone. We should start moving. Yeah. Good. All right. Like an irony at all. Just let it go. You gonna break into song? <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Pick a little talk a little. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Talk a lot. Pick a little. She likes to hear. She wants to hear what you have. It is like a mountain goat. Producer Molly Webster. Thanks also to Craig Childs, whose latest book is Apocalyptic Planet. Uh, and a special shout out to Henry Reich from Minute Physics and Minute Earth. He has been spending time with us, got totally fascinated by Craig's story, and uh, made a little wonderful animation of a story that you didn't hear on our podcast or our radio show. It's just on the web. So that is Henry's animation, and you should look for it at radiolab.org. Yep, it'll be up soon at radiolab.org. Message to... This is Dirk Vaughn. Hi, this is Dirk Childs. This is Jamie Childs. Hi, this is Reagan Choi. Radio Lab is produced by WNYC and distributed by NPR. Radio Lab is produced by Jad Abumrad. Our staff includes Ellen Horn, Soren Wheeler, Tim Howard, Brenna Farrell, Molly Canyon Grub Webster, Melissa O'Donnell, Dylan Keefe, Jamie York, Lynn Levy, Andrew Mills, and Kelsey Paget. With help from Ariane Wack, Matt Kielty, Simon Adler, and Lily Sullivan. Special thanks to Mac Primo. Everyone at Make Markerbot, Makerbot, the Edge of the Theaters Park Museum, and H. Phelps. Hope that works. Thanks, and goodbye. End of mailbox. 
Hi, this is Frankie. I have two things to destroy today. The first one is a beer stein that I painted at one of those paint your own pottery places with my stupid ex-boyfriend. It's a stupid mug and it was a stupid relationship. So here goes. <laughs> Uh, this is Jerry Miller calling from Chicago, Illinois. That was me punching a wall. This is Caroline Bleehart from Brooklyn, New York. I made this globe of the world puzzle. I did it when I was in high school because I was spent a long time in my room. And, yeah. oh my god. I don't know, things are getting better now. And maybe it's time Sarah to like, let like, go of that it. part. So let's destroy it. My name is Mary, and I'm going to destroy a picture of me and my ex-boyfriend. I am cleaning up all the paperwork from my classes, and this is the sound of me ripping them up. This is my father's, one of my father's computers. And this week, it's three years since the stroke that killed your father. So we're going to beat the out of it with a hammer. Yes. satisfying <laughs> my name is justin last year my life was like a country song first i lost my girl then i lost my job then i lost my house then my dog got killed and this is the sound of me destroying my old life